New players usually dislike the hovercraft intensely. It's floaty, hard to steer, and seems almost impossible to keep speed with. But, with a little practice and a better understanding of how the vehicle works, many players find hover quickly becoming their absolute favorite vehicle. Lucky for them, all 20 of DKR's tracks can be played in hover, making it by far the most content-heavy vehicle in the game. Thanks to Hover's extremely quirky and unique mechanics, its gameplay always results in some of the most creative executions, ranging from extremely long chains of boosts to inventive ways of tackling tricky movement. So let's dive into Hovercraft. There are six beginner mechanics that every runner needs to learn how to do in order to go fast. We'll cover the most confusing of them first, A-tapping. Players often struggle when trying to use A-tapping in the hovercraft. Beginners usually learn car first, where A-tapping can be done at almost any rate and almost all the time with little consequence. In hover, however, A-tapping is much more sensitive and requires practiced timing to accomplish. This is because in hover, the rules of A-tapping change slightly. In car, A-tapping is at its best when only pressing the A button for one frame per tap. In hover, A-tapping is at its best when only releasing the A button for one frame per tap. This makes A-tapping in hover feel stiffer and less chaotic. You don't want to bounce your thumb up and down on the button. You want to release and re-grab the button quickly. In addition to this release rule in hover, you cannot begin tapping the A button until the hovercraft has reached its top speed. If you are even slightly below your top speed, a-tapping simply will not work, and you will quickly lose all your speed. You need to hold down A for a moment, and then begin tapping. While driving the hovercraft, Holding the R button will give you extremely flexible control over your ability to turn. Without holding R down, the hovercraft will simply rotate in the direction you push the joystick. This is slow and extremely unhelpful. With the R button, however, the hovercraft will tilt and lean in that direction. This makes your turning ability vastly more powerful, which opens opportunity for using hovercraft's most well-known exploit. Snaking. Instead of driving in a straight line, drive the hovercraft in a winding, snaking motion along the path you wish to follow. This is vastly faster than just driving in a straight line. The reason this tech exists at all is likely thanks to special programming that helps the hovercraft keep its speed during a turn, which is where hover would lose the most speed by far. If you are always turning, you will always gain that boost of speed, which will allow you to travel much more quickly overall. Sneaking should always be used in conjunction with A-tapping. This is because holding R and A at the same time is actually slower than just holding down A by itself. So, if you are going to be driving straight without sneaking, just use the A button. If you are going to hold R down, you need to be sneaking, or you'll be going slower overall. One mistake that many new hover players make is snaking by alternating the joystick from full left and full right. Snaking this way is slower, inefficient, and harder to control. Instead, push the joystick upwards and alternate between up left and up right joystick positions. This accomplishes two things. First of all, the actual turning motion will be more gradual and will allow you to have more finesse over the trajectory of your driving. Secondly, 
Pushing up on the joystick will activate the pitch control element of the vehicle and will push your vehicle downwards towards the ground. This will help you preserve and keep your speed. Note as well that the rate in which you toggle between up left and up right follows a consistent rhythm. Many players find themselves snaking too fast, which will be slower. Snaking too slowly can also be slower, so try to keep this rhythm of toggle as much as possible. Whenever you are driving straight, this rhythm should remain the same. As you turn, the rate of toggle will need to change slightly depending on the turn. Keep in mind, you can still steer the vehicle full left and right to turn very sharply. You can even pull down on the joystick to pull the nose of the vehicle upward slightly, making extremely sharp turns easier in certain circumstances. You've likely noticed by now that pressing the R button will cause the hovercraft to hop into the air slightly. This is one of the quirkiest mechanics of the vehicle, and has many interesting and creative uses during gameplay, like hopping off the whale in Whale Bay, or hopping to grab a banana. One interesting use of the hovercraft hop is the ability to turn more sharply when in the air. A well-timed hop and joystick input can help the hovercraft make very tight corners. You can include a B press in this hop turn to make it even sharper. The B button in hovercraft is a brake, but like the car, is primarily used to steer. You can tap the B button at any time during a turn to turn more sharply for the time that B is held down. Brake turns are the key to making tight and accurate micro adjustments, which will be very important for our next section. This is a good time to mention as well that you don't need to be moving in order to turn the hovercraft. You can sit completely still and spin in a circle, so turning around is quite easy compared to the car. Boosting is, of course, extremely important going fast in the hovercraft and there are special techniques used to make the most out of these boosts. First off, hover and plane zippers work differently than ground zippers. On a ground zipper, simply touching it will give you the boost. For both hover and plane zippers, however, you need to be facing the same direction as the zipper is pointing. If you are misaligned in any way, the game will take a moment to redirect you. This loses time, and can often give lower quality boosts. Driving straight on through the zipper is very difficult, but by mastering the micro adjustments needed to do so will improve the quality of your boosts dramatically. When boosting, you can travel farther with the speed you get by rapidly wiggling the joystick back and forth between up left and up right. Additionally, the end of a boost can also be extended by performing a hop at the end of the speed gained from the zipper. Wiggling like this can be extremely helpful in trying to connect as many zippers together as possible, which is one of the major keys to going fast in hover. This is true in all vehicles, but the hovercraft benefits the most from this by far. This is because every boost in hover must end with a full re-grab of the A button in order to get back up to top speed. Otherwise, A tapping will not work and you will lose all your momentum. To avoid this speed loss, you have to master the technique of regaining top speed at the end of a boost. Once the boost is starting to end, perform your end of boost hop. Then, press A down fully until top speed is gained. Then, resume A tapping. Avoiding the need to do this after every boost saves an incredible amount of time on any given race. So, connecting boosts together is one of the best ways to improve your hover times. 
but there will always be some spots that the hovercraft simply can't reach without a little help from the A button. So you need to be prepared to re-grab the A button at the right moment to prevent yourself from losing too much speed. Overall, boosting in general and the end of boost A button re-grab are some of the hardest parts about hovercraft. Not only can it be very hard to tell if you are doing this technique correctly, but it's even harder to tell if you are doing it faster than the last time you did it. Luckily, there is even more tech to discuss that will help you keep speed and make the most out of your boosts. And this time, it comes from a rather unexpected place. Bonking in car or plane is almost always an enormous time loss. For the hovercraft, however, it can be a gigantic speed boost. For whatever reason, bonking the side of the hovercraft into walls seems to propel you forward at double your current speed. While bonking headfirst into a wall is still a big time loss for hover, bonking the sides of the vehicles into walls can fling the hovercraft extremely long distances. This is one of the most fun parts about hover. While car and plane avoid walls at almost all costs, hover seeks out every angle it can find and uses it to extend boosts and shoot the vehicle into the sky to travel long distances. Finding spots to abuse this technique can be difficult, but most often they appear in interesting and unexpected places. Just remember, you need to hit the side of your vehicle against the wall. Head first will always be a time loss. It is very difficult to explain how to play DKR's hovercraft. Each technique has big effects on the speed of the vehicle, but small variations in how the techniques are executed may have a large part to play in being faster than other players on a micro level. At any given time, it is entirely unclear if your micro gameplay is of high quality. All you can truly be certain of is whether or not your macro gameplay is good. What this means is that all of these techniques are important for going fast. There is Quite literally, no combination of technically sound inputs that any one player can say is definitively faster than the other. So, experiment. Find out what works best for you, and try to take a flexible approach to learning this vehicle. In the end, it may just end up becoming your favorite of the three. Before this video ends, we'll take a look at a hover classic, Boulder Canyon. This track is a great balance of all the main hover tech. On screen, you'll see each piece of tech talked about in this video. Each tech will flash on and off, based on which of them is being performed in the gameplay. If you'd like, you can use YouTube's playback settings to watch this portion back at a slower speed.
check the description below for updates on this tutorial. You can also find more reference materials for this video, as well as links to DKR64.com and the Discord. Thanks for watching.